Hello and welcome to Technician's Crew Pass. My name is Chris Tobias, and in this episode of Crew Pass TV, we're going to be road testing the new Key Pro Mini by AJA. I also want to have a quick look at the AJA calculator app. Basically, it's this great little free app that they've developed where you can put in the record time that you think you need, the resolution you want to record in, the format you want to record in, and it tells you the memory uh, that you'll need um, to do that. Uh, then lastly, I want to come back and I want to connect via a, a laptop and Ethernet or Cat5 directly to the Key Pro Mini uh, and show you the web interface. Um, you can obviously do that to configure the Key Pro before you head out, or you can do that if the key, you want to sit the Key Pro on a network um, and just do monitoring. Really cool uh, way to um, navigate the Key Pro Mini menu. So let's have a look um, at the Key Pro Mini itself. Uh, basically, there's not much that actually comes in the box. Um, you get uh, power supply, which is a four pin XLR. Um, you get the Key Pro Mini itself, which as you can see is quite small. Uh, you get documentation CD, that's about it. So um, as you would expect, the Key Pro Mini has all, well, all of, or most of the functionality as the original Key Pro. Still records in ProRes 422, uh, HQ, LT, and um, uh, Proxy. Uh, rather than the old hard drives that the original Key Pro takes, it actually takes CF cards, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's have a uh, look at the front panel. If we start at the bottom of the front panel, you've got the mic and line uh, inputs, which is right and left, with also a, uh, a visual indicator here. These are little uh, uh, pots, so the little gain pots essentially, so you've got a bit of gain uh, directly off the front, so you don't have to go into the menu. You've also got um, over here the headphone out, so you can monitor what's coming in, and there's a mini jack for that. And it's got its own little volume control as well. Power button here, just above the power button, there's a, uh, a one, uh, sorry, a light with one one and two written beside it, they refer to the memory card slots on top. Um, you've also got the slots button. Basically what you do is you press that and it makes the card safe to eject. Um, most of the other functionality here, most of the other buttons here are pretty uh, straightforward, but uh, you do have uh, media, config and status. Uh, these are the main buttons that you'll be using to navigate through things. You've got the little window up here or the little display screen. Um, it's really great. Um, one of the things that I like, and I'll, I'll show you later, is when you hit the status button, it actually pops up and tells you the status of the device and the input that you're, that you're using. So really great, easy way to see what's going on. Um, I actually find the menu uh, built into the device not that difficult to navigate once you get your head around it. I still prefer to connect via a laptop just because it's easy to set up and you can see what you're doing, but um, the menu itself isn't really that, that difficult. So just moving on to the top, <coughs> Um, as I was saying before, it takes two CF cards. Um, they recommend the Extreme Pros. So I use the ScanDisk Extreme Pro cards. Um, I've got the 32 gig cards and they seem to do really well. One of the great things that I do actually like that they've uh, changed over to is using CF cards. Obviously, if you remember the old Key Pro, it was the hard drives that used to have to slot in and out. Um, by having CF cards, obviously, if you, if you run out of memory or you need to get another CF card, they're, they're not that difficult to get. Um, just moving on to the back panel, <coughs> starting from the bottom, you've got your um, analog audio right and left, which is XLR. Um, now, th these can be line, mic, or you can also have fan phantom power running over that, which is, again, a really cool function. You've got your LAN port here to connect it to a network. You've also got time code, which is, uh, comes in B and C. Uh, you've got HDMI in, HDMI out, um, and you've got SDI in, SDI out. Now, both the SDI and the HDMI have embedded audio as well and loop through. So again, really cool, and they've really thought about the functionality of it. So um, looking at it as it is, um, I don't actually have the mounting plates, which is something that I never got when I purchased it, but they come separately. And basically, there's these mounting plates uh, that mount on to these four screws, and you can mount one on both sides, and it's a universal mounting plate. So basically, what you can do is, you can put the mounting plate on here, have a camera, mount this onto the back of the camera or mount it on, onto your actual stand and then you can mount a battery pack um, or you can mount a radio mic or um, whatever you want onto the back of this. So it is designed to go onto the back of your camera which is really um, a, a great functionality. Now also the power is the 4-pin XLR so you can power this off, off a battery pack and then uh, loop through to your camera. So again, really nice, really uh, functional, and I really think that they've, they've designed this well. You can also get a, um, I haven't seen them, but you can get 
a desk mount. So if you want to mount this on a desk, if you're in a studio, you can get a little desk mount for them as well, but they, they do seem to sit um, pretty, pretty neatly as they are. All right, so let's have a quick look at the calculator app and then I'll show you this turned on and we'll connect to it. Okay, so here we are with the app. The app is called AJA Data Calc, C-A-L-K. And if we just open that up and uh, have a look, what you'll see here is that uh, I've worked out that if I go to the time up here and I put in 20, well, let's say 30 minutes, I want 30 minutes, 30 minutes of record time, or you could say days or hours, um, I want minutes. I'm gonna record in HD 1080, uh, um, sorry, 1080 at 24 hertz. Um, I want to record in ProRes HQ um, and I also want two channel audio. So you can go through here and change all these settings. Um, I'll just show you some of the settings that you've got. You've also got uh, Ultra HD, 4K, so on, and they're always up, um, updating this. But for the purpose of this, I will just be doing uh, 10, uh, sorry, yeah, I'll just be doing 1080. Um, and what this is telling me at the bottom here, uh, in blue, it's telling me that my storage or the memory that I need is 30.8 gigabyte. Now I've only got 32 gig cards, so that works out perfect. So that means I can get 22 minutes of record time per card. Now, the other thing at the very bottom, you've got the time calculator. So the time calculator is basically the same. So um, you can go through and uh, work out for 30 minutes how much time uh, it, you'll, uh, you'll actually have. So it's kind of working back the other way. So basically you say, I've got a 32 gig card uh, put, in the uh, put in the resolution and the format you want to record and it tells you how much time. So it's just working it back the other way. Really cool free little app. You can download that from the App Store and I'll leave a link below in the show notes. So here we are, I've powered the Key Pro Mini um, and you can see uh, I've just got uh, HDMI going straight into the back um, and you can see uh, at the front here I've got the audio level uh, indicators um, uh, displaying that there's right left audio coming in and you'll also see that I've now got the menu, uh, the little display screen lit up and if I press the status button you can see that this is telling me that my input is 1080p at 25 hertz, uh, my output is 1080p at 25 hertz and I'm using HDMI in and HDMI out. Um, so very easy way just to see what's going on. Uh, and I'll now show you how you connect the Key Pro uh, directly to a laptop uh, just via ethernet cable. Um, so basically what I've got here is just uh, everyday standard ethernet cable. You can use a crossover cable I read in the manual um, but I'm just using a standard ethernet cable. And basically, all we're gonna do is just connect straight into the ethernet port on the back of the Key Pro. And I'm going to connect to my MacBook. Um, so basically that's it. And then the only other thing that we need to do is um, on your MacBook, uh, you go to system preference, uh, yeah, systems, preferences network and what you want to do is you want to uh, sorry this is if you're using Mac you want to add and I'm just going to call uh, sorry I'm going to add an Ethernet port and I'll call this uh, key pro mini uh, create that 
then I want to manually uh, do this because uh, I know the IP address. Now the uh, default IP address, so if you're using the default settings uh, for the key pro is 10.65.74.65. So I need to make the MacBook something that's not that. So I'm going to make the MacBook uh, 10.64.75. 64. The subnet mask is 255.0.0.0 and you apply. That's it, uh, really simple. Now you should see that it should, so the green light over here should go green once it's connected. Uh, so we'll just double check the IP address. Um, so basically you just come to your web browser and all you want to do is you want to put in the uh, web address for the key pro, which is 10.65.74.65. And there you go, so you're connected uh, directly to the key pro. So by doing that, if I just go back to system preferences, you'll see that now the uh, key pro or the um, ethernet port is now green telling me that I'm actually connected to something. So that's uh, just a simple way to know that it's up and running. So let's have a look at um, the actual uh, uh, menu structure. So basically, um, everything that you see here on the screen is what's built into the key pro itself. Um, one of the great things about this is you can come over here, you can see your serial number, you can see your software, you can see that you're connected, and you can also see what devices. So you can, if you're on a network, um, quite easily give each key pro a static IP um, and then chuck them all onto a network and then they'll all show up here. Um, so a very, very cool way to um, navigate. So basically we're in the status at the moment. You can see here that the video inputs HDMI, uh, the input format is 1080p at 25, uh, the input time code is running, uh, and also I've got the, um, the record format is ProRes 422, um, and audio inputs HDMI, and I'm recording in two channel. So you can change all of those settings, but that's just what I've got to set out at the moment. Now here's your config and it's really simple. So the, I really like the way that they've set the menu. If you actually hover over um, the actual menu name, it gives you a little bit of a, a little bit of a description. So basically if I go, go to audio inputs, it'll tell me basically uh, a little bit about it. And it's quite simple. Everything's really simple to navigate and change. So you just, you just click and change what you want and it's uh, live. So while you're changing it, it's actually changing live on the key pro. So that's basically the menu structure for the config. Um, you've also got, uh, sorry, I should probably tell you about the test patterns. You've also got some test patterns in here as well. So if you want to send a test pattern at 720p, 60 hertz, um, you can actually send bl um, black, you can send 75% bars, 100% bars, um, and you can also send audio as well, um, which is a really cool feature. So you can test that you're actually getting video and audio out of the key pro into your system. Um, you can change the name of the key pro, so this might be key pro one, key pro two, so on and so on. The media is your playback area, so this is basically where you're, um, so if you're playing something from the key pro, um, so you can actually use it um, to, to, as a playback device, um, these are your settings, very basic. Uh, transport uh, um, is actually just the interface, so this is exactly the same as the front panel, so you can hit record, stop, play, so on from here, um, and you can also show some of the, uh, like the system, that, so if you've, if you've got more. Uh, presets, this is a great way to record the presets. I find it a little clunky trying to do presets from the front panel. This is just a great way to go through and then say, yep, that's a preset for this, preset for that, if you're using it for default things. Network, um, this just tells me the network, so how, how I've got it set up. Um, the other great thing, uh, sorry, the other great thing about this is you can do firmware updates. So from here, I can go and browse and do firmware updates. Um, so you, you are connecting to the device and you can see quite easily what software version you're up to. So I quite like that functionality. Um, also down the side here, you've got playlist. So you could make a playlist. So it's quite easy to add um, and there's no media mounted, but you can add playlists. So again, you can um, go to certain snippets on your time code and say that I want to add that so that you can easily come back to those if you're playing off it. And the other great thing is the alarm section here. So at the moment, there's no alarms. Um, if I pull the HDMI out, um, I should get an alarm telling me that I've, sorry, it's telling me up here that I've lost the input HDMI. And normally I thought that this would go into alarm, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, I'll just plug that back in and you'll see up here 
that it'll change again. So really easy, really uh, uh, simple, and I really like this status window, especially if you can get it onto a network, it's just a great way to actually monitor things. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Key Pro Mini. One thing I just want to touch on quickly is the internal fan noise. Uh, when the internal fan set to normal, I found that uh, when it kicks in, it can be quite noisy. I did go in and have a look at the back end and there is settings where you can turn it to quiet mode. Uh, I'd strongly suggest doing that if it's mounted onto the back of a camera, it was going to be around microphones. Apart from that, I think AJA has done a fantastic job. I love the metal housing. I love the universal brackets. I love that it records to ProRes and best of all, it uses uh, CF cards. Um, all in all, I found these online for around $1,200 to $1,400, uh, depending on where you go. I'll leave some links below in the show notes uh, to those websites so you can go through and have a look if you want to. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, if you like what you've seen today, please subscribe to our channel and like this video. Don't forget to tell your friends. And if you haven't joined crewpass.com, make sure you go through and do that. Crewpass.com is essentially an online uh, membership uh, site which is completely free. Uh, designed to be um, a membership site, kind of like LinkedIn, but for technicians in the arts and entertainment industry. So uh, if you're looking to connect with people or just looking for information on general things that's happening in the industry, and I'm talking globally within the industry, um, not just here in Australia where we are, um, log on to crewpass.com. Uh, that's it from me. And uh, if there's anything you'd like to see me review or any products um, uh, uh, the, that you know of, or anything that's coming out, um, let me know and I can see if I can get my hands on them and do a review for you. Um, otherwise, uh, don't, don't be afraid to comment the videos and let us know what you think. Um, and you can always send us a uh, email via the crewpass.com website. That's it from me and I'll see you in the next video.